As we know, the Skull Cavern can be a very difficult place to survive through, and then finding out that there's an even more difficult set of mines to do next can be outright scary. However, with these 7 steps, you can make it a little more tolerable. Here's an easy guide to beating the volcano mines in Stardew Valley. Number 1. The Volcano Dungeon is located at the northernmost end of Ginger Island. Ginger Island can be unlocked after completing all the community center bundles. The dungeon only has 10 levels, however, you cannot simply use stairs, unlike the other mines to get to the finish. To progress to the next cave level, you usually have to find an entrance of staircases on the opposite side of where you started, but sometimes it could also turn out to be right in front of you. But more on that later. You will have to traverse through the rocky terrain and lava lakes to reach the top of the volcano, where you can finally reach the forge and get two additional walnuts. Now as for the tips on how to actually traverse the mines. The first most important item to bring with you, which is actually least expected, is a watering can. The lava rivers and lakes that you often come across can be extinguished and made into a path by simply pouring water over it. Luckily, the paths you make stay for the whole day, so you don't have to worry about getting stuck in the middle. But yeah, this item is the most important because depending on how lucky you are, this could be the only item you need to make it to the end. It's very unlikely, but hey, if you're good at juking these monsters, you might be good. It's also very important that you upgrade your watering can to at least copper or iron or higher because a regular watering can can't hold enough water to make bridges the whole way through. There are also only two watering can refill stations in the dungeon one at the very beginning and one at level 5. So running out of water and then having to run back and forth between the levels can be very annoying and time consuming, so it's best to just upgrade the watering can. Number 3. The second most important item that you have to bring with you is food. And not just any food, but high health food. As expected, the mobs in this dungeon are very dangerous, more than the skull cavern, and having good food can be the difference between life and death. Ideally, you should eat magic rock candy, which you could get at the desert trader for 3 prismatic shards, or at the raccoon wife's shop for 20 golden mystery boxes. Another cheeky way to get them quick and easy is by getting a ton of farm animals and naming them 279. Anyway, magic rock candy is by no means an easy food item to get, but there are plenty of other alternate options. Honestly, any food that gives you high health is the best because you tend to lose a lot of health and quick replenishment is your best chance of survival. The best high health food are fruit salad, maple bar, which is actually a pretty easy recipe, fiddlehead fern risotto, and so on. But again, any food works as long as it's either high health or if you have a lot of it. One advantage to the volcano mines is that you can find magma caps around the dungeons, which are actually a pretty good food item as it gives high health and high energy. It is also a good idea to drink some coffee as sometimes speeding through some levels might be your best bet. Number 4. Now before you venture into the mines, it's important to look at what type of monsters you'll meet and what they do. I also use a dwarf sword for the remainder of this point to show you that I'm not able to just kill them due to having a powerful weapon. Upon entering, you will be welcomed by tiger slimes, which are just your basic slimes but with higher health, a hothead, which has low health but explodes before dying, so stay back, and lava lurks, which shoot a fireball, which you can simply hit to defend. Also, you can only kill them if they're two blocks near land, so try and bait them to come near land before you try and attack it. Then you have the magma sprite and sparker whose attack pattern is similar to the serpent in the skull cavern. The magma sparker can give you a burnt defect, which slows you down and makes you weaker. But worry not, because it only lasts 6 seconds. With both the magma sprites and sparkers, the technique I find best is to just stand still and wait for them to come to you. And also sometimes the magmas tend to just come at you from different angles, so it's best to face a direction in which you know you can actually hit them. Then when they're about a block or two away, you can start swinging your weapon. The last regular mob that you will find is the Dwarvish Sentry, which can sometimes spawn from broken barrels. It tends to hover and fly towards you, but it's quite slow, so you can kill it quite easily. And lastly, the more infrequent monsters you will find are the Magma Duggy, which is similar to the regular Duggy, and the False Magma Cap, which looks like a Magma Cap, but upon proximity, it attacks you similar to the rock crab from the regular mines. For the magma duggy, my best strategy is to kill them yet again by standing still near the dirt patches and waiting for them to pop their head out and then just start swinging your weapon. As for the false magma, you can figure out if it's real or not just by hovering your mouse over it. If there's a green plus mark, then it's a mushroom forgeable item. However, if nothing shows up, then it's most likely a false magma cap and you're gonna have to get ready to fight. But they're low health, so you'll be fine. Number 5. Now let's talk about rings. 
Since the volcano dungeon follows the skull cavern, I'll assume you have iridium, with which you can make an iridium ring, which gives you magnetism, light, and 10% attack damage. This is evidently very useful in the mines. The one that is extremely useful is the slime charmer ring, which gives you zero damage from slimes, which of course can be a great advantage. Other helpful rings are based on the type of player you are. If you tend to lose more health, you can just use the vampire ring, which gives you a little health every time you kill a mob. If you like speed, you can use the hot java ring, which can always come in handy as it either drops regular coffee or triple shot espressos upon killing a monster. And the rings I go for are the iridium band and alternate between the hot java ring and the vampire ring. Number 6. Now onto swords. If you haven't done so already, you can get yourself a galaxy sword in the desert by placing a prismatic shard in between these three pillars. If you haven't already found a prismatic shard, you don't have to worry. You can obtain one by exploring deep in the skull caverns like level 100 plus, breaking these rocks, using bombs is the best method, fishing, breaking boxes, and so on. Again, a cheeky way of getting it fast and easy can just be by getting a farm animal and naming it 74, but this only works on PC unfortunately. But the easiest and relatively slow way is by getting a rainbow trout pond, which can occasionally give you a prismatic shard as a reward. And lastly, number 7, this is just a tiny compilation of details about the volcano mines that are too small to be their own points. After reaching the forge, you want to go through this tunnel and step on this plate so that the gates open, allowing you to access the forge without having to suffer through all 10 levels over and over. There can be a time when you have cleared a level but you're locked out of the entrance by a locked gate. In order to open it, you will have to find between 1 to 4 pressure pads which you stand on. The order of stepping on it doesn't matter luckily. You should also always pick up dragon teeth and cinder shard nodes. The dragon teeth are important for making the ginger island basilisk and also for making the ginger island warp totems. And the cinder shards are important for the forge with enchanting. 